Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Big Bill Anderson's Life Tours. Today, I'm looking back at the long career of a great actor and my evening spent with the original 1960s Batman's Joker, Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero was an actor, singer, dancer, and vocal artist. He was active in film, radio, and television for almost 60 years. His wide range of screen roles included Latin lovers, historical figures in costume dramas, characters in light domestic comedies, and of course, the Joker on the Batman television series, which was included in TV Guide's list of the 60 nastiest villains of all time. Cesar Julio Romero Jr. was born in New York City on February 15th, 1907. Romero grew up in Bradley Beach, New Jersey. After his parents lost their sugar import business and suffered losses in the stock market crash of 1929, Romero's Hollywood earnings allowed him to support his large family, all of whom had followed him to the West Coast years later. Romero lived on and off with various family members for the rest of his life. On October 12, 1942, he voluntarily enlisted in the United States Coast Guard as an apprentice seaman and served in the Pacific Theater of Operations. He reported aboard the Coast Guard manned assault transport USS Cavalier in November 1943. Romero saw action during the invasion of Tinian and Saipan. He was eventually promoted to the rating of Chief Boatswain's mate. The six foot three Romero routinely played Latin lovers in films from the 1930s until the 1950s, usually in supporting roles. He starred as the Cisco Kid in six westerns made between 1939 and 1941. Romero danced and performed comedy in 20th Century Fox films he starred in opposite Carmen Miranda and Betty Grable, such as Weekend in Havana and Springtime in the Rockies in the 1940s. In The Thin Man in 1934, Romero played a villainous supporting role opposite the film's main star, William Powell. Many of Romero's films from his early period saw him cast in small character parts such as Italian gangsters and East Indian princes. Romero had a lead role as the rebel leader Kota Khan in John Ford's British Raja era action film Wee Willie Winkle starring Shirley Temple in 1937 and The Little Princess in 1939 again alongside Shirley Temple. He also appeared in a comic turn as foil for Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and his crew in the original Ocean's Eleven movie in 1960. Romero sometimes played the leading man, for example, in 15 Maiden Lane in 1936 opposite the beautiful Claire Trevor, as well as winning the key role of Doc Holliday character, which was named Doc Halliday in Frontier Marshal three years later. Movie mogul Daryl Zanuck personally selected Romero to co-star with Tyrone Power in the Technicolor historical epic Captain from Castile in 1947, directed by Henry King. While Power played a fictionalized character, Romero played Herm Herman Cortez a historical conquistador in Spain's conquest of the Americas. Among many television credits, Romero appeared several times on the Martha Ray show in the 1950s. He portrayed Don Diego de la Vega's maternal uncle in number of season two Zorro episodes. He performed the Mambo with Giselle McKenzie on her NBC variety show, The Jam Giselle McKenzie show. He guest starred in 1957 on CBS's The Lucy Desi Comedy Hours first episode of the seventh season, Lucy Takes a Cruise to Havana. 
He played Don Carlos, a card shark, on the episode. The Honorable Don Charlie story of NBC's Wagon Train he starred in also. On January 16, 1958, he appeared on The Ford Show starring Tennessee Ernie Ford. In 1959, Romero was cast as Joaquin in the episode Caballero from The Texan. And on September 26th of that year, he hosted the Cuban installment of John Gunther's High Road. In 1965, Romero played the head of Thrush in France in The Never Never Affair from The Man from Uncle. And from 1965 to 1968, he portrayed the Joker on Batman. He refused to shave his mustache for the role. And so the supervillain's white face makeup was simply smeared over it throughout the series' run and in the 1966 film. His guest star work in the 1970s included a recurring role on the Western comedy Alias Smith & Jones. Romero later portrayed Peter Stavros on Falcon Crest from 1985 to 1987. He also appeared in the sixth season episode of The Golden Girls when he played a suitor named Tony Del Vecchio for Sophia. Apart from these television roles, Romero appeared as A.J. Arno, a small-time criminal who continually opposes Dexter Riley, played by Kurt Russell, and his schoolmates of Medfield College in a series of films by Walt Disney Productions in the 1970s. Romero never married and had no children, but made frequent appearances at Hollywood events, escorting many beautiful actresses such as Joan Crawford, Linda Darnell, Barbara Stanwyck, Lucille Ball, Anne Sheridan, Jane Wyman, and Ginger Rogers. He was almost always described in interviews and articles as a confirmed bachelor. Romero talked about his being gay with author Bose Hadley in a series of interviews which were published in 1996. A registered Republican in October of 1960, he appeared in the Nixon Lodge bumper sticker motorcade campaign. On February 17, 1990, I had the very unique opportunity to spend some time talking with Cesar Romero. We were both attending the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in Studio City, California, at the historic Sportsman's Lodge. The CAC, as it's known, is an organization that met once a year for a night of fellowship with professional wrestlers, boxers, and actors attending in formal dress for a beautiful dinner and an awards banquet. The CAC the CAC president, Iron Mike Mazurki, was a former wrestler and actor and had invited Cesar Romero to attend. There were about 200 men and women in attendance that night, about 10 people seated at each table. I was fortunate enough to be seated at the same table as Cesar Romero, and I was amazed at how well-spoken intelligent and charming he was to everyone in attendance. To me, it was what I would imagine old school Hollywood was like, conversing with people in a friendly manner. And he asked a lot of questions that night to different folks around the table about wrestling, about your opponents, about what goes into making a match good. And many people at the table conversed with him about his acting career and talked to him about Batman and other subjects concerning Hollywood. I was so happy and proud to spend a couple hours in the company of Mr. Cesar Romero. On January 1st, 1994, at age 86, just four years after I met him, he died from complications of a blood clot while being treated for bronchitis and pneumonia at St. John's Health Center in Santa Monica, California. His body was cremated and the ashes were interred at Inglewood Park Cemetery in Inglewood, California. A 
couple of years ago, I stopped by Caesar's final resting place with my son, Audie, and we paid our respects to this fine gentleman. For his contributions to the motion picture and television industry, Romero has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Quite an accomplishment for this historic actor. Caesar appeared in over 110 movies and appeared in 60 television shows throughout his long career. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at Mr. Cesar Romero's acting career. Please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Tell your friends also about my YouTube channel. There's a lot more content coming, my friends. I'm delving deep into my photos and my travel. And we'll tell you some interesting stories of my travels, the wrestlers, actors, other celebrities that I've met along the road to life. So my friends, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. It means the world to me. Thank you very much, my friends, for spending a few moments with me, uh, your precious time. Have a beautiful day. Adios, amigos.